Today we're tackling basic cabinetry and building some shaker style tongue and groove doors. I'll show you how I made these tongue and groove doors using nothing but the table saw and a regular blade. The concept of tongue and groove doors is simple. All four pieces have a groove and two of them have a tongue on each end, which allows you to snap the tongues into the grooves and form a frame. Slip in a center panel and you have a door. Okay, simple enough, right? But what I want to know is how do you dial in your settings to get a perfect joint? Well, that's what I'm about to figure out. Let's get started. For this project, I'm using some leftover maple floorboards I have on hand. They have lines across the back, but since this door will be used in my shop, I don't mind at all. The floorboards actually already have a tongue and some grooves, so I could almost just use them as is to make a door frame, but then I wouldn't be able to make this video, would I? So after removing the tongue and groove, I set the stop block on my miter saw to cut the two sides, which are also called styles, and then did the same to cut the top and bottom piece, which are referred to as rails. So here I have all my four pieces ready, but before going any further, I bet you're wondering how to size your parts, so let's do a little simple math. I want to make a door that's 25 inches tall, so my styles will be 25 inches. Easy as that. I'm using 2 inch wide boards and I want my door to be 16 inches wide, so how long should my rails be? To calculate the length of the rails, I'll start with my total door width and subtract the width of my two styles, which are 2 inches. So that leaves me with 12 inches. However, I know I'll be cutting grooves that are 3 eighths deep, so I'll add 3 eighths for each side, which leaves me with a total rail length of 12 and 3 quarters. So back to my parts, there's one final crucial piece that you'll need, and that's a test piece made from the exact same stock. I made two test pieces just in case. So after marking those to avoid any confusion, it's time to head over to the table saw and cut the grooves. The first step is to set the height of the blade, which will be the depth of the grooves. I cut a scrap piece of wood to exactly 3 eighths and use that as a gauge to set the height. Here you can see the tips of the blade are higher than my piece of wood, so I lowered the blade slightly until the very tips were flush with the top and then locked that height in. Next I need to set the fence so that the blade is roughly centered down the middle of my board. I mark the center on one scrap piece and use this as a reference. The center line doesn't have to be perfect, the idea is to set the fence so it goes through the center line but slightly off center. I'm using a feather board to keep the board snug up against the fence. If you want more details on this and all the other tools I use, you'll find links down in the description below. So using my test piece, I ran it through once, then flipped it around and ran it through again. You should end up with a single groove down the middle. If not, readjust and try again on another test piece. So with my test piece being successful, without touching any of my settings, I can go ahead and run all of my four pieces through, first on the face and then flipping them over and running them through again. By flipping the boards over, this ensures you get a perfectly centered groove. So with that step complete, I have a thin groove in all my four pieces, as well as my test piece. Next it's time to widen the groove to the perfect size. So again, starting with my test piece, I move the fence inwards just slightly to widen the groove. Not too much, the idea is to make the groove just big enough to fit your center panel. I ran the test piece through, once again flipping it over to run it through twice, and then took it over to my center panel material, in my case a quarter inch plywood, to do a test fit. As you can see, the groove was too tight, but that was to be expected. So I went back to my table saw and moved the fence inwards ever so slightly and locked it down. I ran the same test piece through once again, both back and front, and did another test. I was getting closer, but it was still too tight. Remember, you can always make the groove bigger, but you can't make it smaller. So baby steps are the way to go here. So back at the table saw, I moved the fence in just a tad and ran my test piece through one more time. I did another test and perfect. The idea here is to get a friction fit, meaning it goes in easily without forcing it and without being too loose. So with my settings dialed in perfectly, I could now run my four pieces through, both front and back, and be confident that I would get the perfectly sized groove dead center. With the grooves done, it's time to move on to the tenons, or the tongues. So back to my test piece, I'm going to draw a line flush with the bottom of my groove. This will help me set my table saw so that the tongues are the same depth as the grooves. But before doing that, I need to set the height of the blade. 
To set the blade, I'm going to use the groove in my test piece as a gauge. Now the idea here is to set the blade below the groove. You really want to creep up on this cut without going too far. Again, make sure to move the blade to ensure the tips are always below the groove in all positions. Next, I can set my fence so that the blade is just inside my reference line. The idea is to have the blade kiss the line, but without going through the line. Alright, I can now flip my test piece perpendicular to the fence and use my miter gauge to make a test cut. You can see I'm left with a small sliver of wood here, so I'm going to raise my blade ever so slightly and do another cut. Okay, getting closer but still not there, so I'll nudge the blade up just a little more and try again. Once I reach the right height where there's just a paper thin piece left, I can go ahead and cut the tongue, again using my test piece. Here I just flipped it over and used the opposite side. With the tenon cut, I can do a test fit, and I'm really happy with the fit. My tongue is the same depth as the groove, with the shoulder bottoming out perfectly. And I've got a nice friction fit, neither too loose nor too tight. Alright, so with my test piece perfectly dialed in, I can grab my two rails and cut the tongues without touching any of the settings. To be sure, I did a test fit with my final pieces and noticed it was a little tight. Because I'm not using a flat bottom blade, it can leave little ridges on the tongue, so it helps to clean them up by running them back and forth over the running blade like this. After that, the fit was absolutely perfect. So I could continue to make the other tongues in both of my rails. Now you typically never want to do a cross cut like this with your piece of wood up against the fence. But in this case, I'm not actually cutting through the wood, so this type of operation really has a minimal risk for kickback. So when all is said and done, I have two styles with a groove, and I have two rails also with a groove, as well as a tongue on each end. Next, I need to cut the center panel to size. And in order to figure out how big I need to cut it, I assembled the frame and measured the inside of the frame. And now, time for a little more math. So back to my example from before, the inside of my frame measures 12 inches wide by 21 inches tall. So to calculate the height of the panel, I'll simply use my measurement of 21 plus 3 eighths to account for the groove in my top rail, and the same for my bottom rail. I'll then remove an eighth just to give me a little wiggle room. That gives me a panel height of 21 and 5 eighths. The calculation for the width is essentially the same. So with the dimensions figured out, I can go ahead and set my fence and cut the panel. I decided to use a quarter inch plywood for this door, but you could also use MDF instead. So after doing a dry fit to make sure everything fit without issue, it's time to glue it up. I'm not going to glue the center panel to allow for any potential movement. I'm only going to apply glue to the tongues, spreading the glue all around, and then slip it into place. I made sure to wipe off any squeeze out, and then repeated the same for the other side, applying glue only to the tongue. I applied some more glue, and slid on the last piece, and used a rubber mallet to help tap it into place, and make a few adjustments until everything lined up. I set the door in some clamps and did a final check on alignment before tightening the clamps. You really only need to lightly tighten the clamps without overdoing it and make sure to apply even pressure to both sides. I checked that the door was nice and flat without any bowing and then measured to check that both diagonals were the same to make sure that the door was square. All good here so I'll let the glue set in the clamps for a few hours. All that's left now is a little sanding, and this door's a wrap. Hey, I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up.
And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, I love to have you, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and tap the bell so you'll get notified when I post new videos. Until next time, thanks for watching, see you soon.